Three Revelations, short interview. Desmond is in a coma as of the events at the end of Brotherhood, which I won't spoil here. He is urged on by a wacky looking Subject 16 to, you know, discover the rest of Ezio's and Altair's memories, well, at least Ezio's. He does also actually experience Altair's memories, but I'm not entirely sure that was 16's plan or fault. Anyway, Ezio is now in Constantinople in 1511, looking for five keys to the Masyaf Temple that the Templars are also looking for the keys to. In this different location, he feels a bit out of place, and I think it might have been smart if they had had a different ancestor of Desmond's to be, but that is really one of the only big complaints with it. It's a very nice location, and again, they get into the history. You know, you meet Princess Suleiman, you fight Janissaries, who use, you know, short-range pistols to, you know, keep the fight interesting, you know. If they're close to you, they use a dagger. If they're a little further away, they're gonna try to shoot you, you know. We finally have alternate fire, which works for all ranged weapons except for the crossbow and a nice good throwing system for all the grenades. Yes, not just smoke bombs, but now, <laughs> you know, we can actually craft different bombs that, you know, some of them are timed. There's, you know, there are different types of gunpowder for how big uh, the area of effect will be. Some of them are for killing, some of them are for distraction, you know, various things. And the, you know, we again get some nice new characters, and the story is again great. In spite of its title, there are still, you know, we do get some answers, but there are still many questions left unanswered. Both single player and multiplayer provide answers, with the focus being on the Assassins and the Templars, respectively. The Templars we find out more about, but still a lot in secret. The basic, you know, multiplayer is essentially the same, but slightly upgraded, with much better support. There are a few new maps and a bunch of new characters. Very few characters return, but pretty much all the abilities and perks and all of the levels do. The relationship between pursuer and target has been evened out greatly, and some of the ways you earn points have been changed for now. For example, you can no longer earn a incognito bonus without actually sneaking up on your target. You know, it doesn't start at incognito, you have to let it rise to that level once your target is in sight, which, you know, is certainly it interesting change. And, you know, if you don't like the multiplayer of this, you know, now that you have both options, you know. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.